so the the one of the things that I also want my audience to get is the personal impact that people who are in the caretaking space of this um, experience. So what what is the personal impact of this work on you, on your colleagues that you know of? How do you tend to your own needs when you're consistently dealing with a population in crisis? Very hard. I think that now because my role is to uh, be the direct supervisor for the providers, I'm more worried about them. And I worry a lot about their sustainability in the field. I worry that they're very isolated, um, especially when they have to do this work from their homes. Um, I think for me, like, I've had the experience of being burnt out a few times um, and pretty significantly. And, and I think that those experiences at least have helped me to try different things, you know, like setting better, better boundaries for myself, not taking on too much, not always trying to like overachieve on a day-to-day -day basis, kind of like keeping it like at 80% so that I can hang in there longer. Um, and I try now to be rather imperfectly <laughs> mirror better behavior for the staff members that report to me. You know, I, I love that you share that and, and thank you for that because, you know, I feel like in our pop culture, the way mm -hmm. issues like this are shared is here's a big trauma, feel bad for the person who's experiencing it. Here's the savior who comes in and helps. And then nobody ever talks about the impact that it has on the people who are doing the caregiving every day. Mm -hmm. It's a huge part of this because mm -hmm. there's so much burnout in all of these areas, right? It's tough to constantly be on the front lines of dealing with someone who's in crisis. Um, and then that in turn can cause crisis for you. And it's one thing that, you know, before pandemic, you could go into an office and quote unquote, possibly leave it there. Mm -hmm. But when it's coming into your home, that energy is coming into your home. It's, mm -hmm. it's a different thing. And I think that's something that people should consider um, when imagining what is the other aspect of, oh, these are great people who work at the Rosanna Center. Aren't they great? So they'll see you out you know, at a table or they'll see you out at one of these events where it's like, oh, we're giving away kids, toys or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I do, like, what, what is it that you want everyday people to keep top of mind about people who do this work? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, hmm. I think it's like, I both want, I do think that the people that work for the center do heroic work. And also I want people to know that you don't have to be a hero to make a difference. Um, I think that so many times I, some of the folks that need the most support, it's like, there's no one in their lives, like no family, friends. Um, and I feel like if, if we want, especially we we'll want new and other interventions outside of the system, we need to really build communities of care. And I would say that, you know, if someone that you know, or someone in your family um, is a victim of domestic violence, it's, yes, it's important to get them connected with the resources, but also there's so much that people can do by just being a non-judgmental support for Thank the you. people near them.